My test shows that the new Samsung Galaxy Tab A9 is better than the competition in one respect. And the competition is quite big. For my review I compared it to the Lenovo Tab M9 and M8, the Amazon Fire HD8 and the Samsung Galaxy Tab A7 Lite. The A7 Lite is the A9's predecessor. I also compared it with the Lenovo Legion Tab Y700 and the iPad Mini from time to time, which are two premium 8 inch devices. In comparison, the A9 is inferior. But compared to the others, the A9 has a big advantage. But first things first, let's start with the screen. The Galaxy Tab A9 has an 8.7 inch screen with a resolution of 1340 by 800 pixels. This means that the pixel density is low and I actually notice pixels while reading. I don't think this is too bad as the basic HD resolution is normal in this price range. The Fire HD 8 Plus and the Realme Pad Mini have a similar pixel density. Only much more expensive tablets or those from China have a higher resolution in this size. It's a shame that it only offers a 60Hz panel, while the larger Galaxy Tab A9 Plus supports 90Hz. Otherwise the screen is good. Compared to the Lenovo Tab M9, the contrast is stronger and it looks a bit brighter. In this respect, it also has improved compared to the Galaxy Tab A7 Lite. It's fully laminated, which isn't always standard for budget devices. Netflix and other streaming services can be watched in HD resolution, which is also not always standard. The two speakers on the sides are good enough for this, but the Lenovo M9 is slightly ahead of it in this respect and most 10 inch tablets also have better sound. It is important to note that the A9 does not support an active stylus, including the S Pen. If you want a good 8 inch tablet with a pen, I can recommend the iPad mini only at the moment. The Galaxy Tab A9 is powered by a MediaTek Helio G99 processor and you can choose between 4 or 8 GB of RAM and 64 or 128 GB of internal storage. I think it's great that we get at least 64 GB instead of just 32 GB. Samsung also offers it with LTE and all models have GPS. However, there's no version with 5G. I have the cheapest version with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. In the Geekbench 5 benchmark comparison, you can see that the A9 is significantly more powerful than many competitors such as the Lenovo Tab M8 Gen 4, Realme Pad Mini, Nokia T10 and even slightly more powerful than the Lenovo Tab M9. Just tablets that are available in China only, such as the Lenovo Legion Tab Y700 and of course the iPad Mini are significantly more powerful. A similar result can be seen in the 3D Mark right left test. Compared to the direct competition, the A9 is well positioned and I think it's nice that it has improved significantly compared to the Galaxy Tab A7 Lite. However, these benchmarks also show that it's still an entry level tablet. The A9 does not offer high gaming performance. I tried to install Fortnite and the game is not supported. However, other games such as PUBG Mobile run quite well on HD settings and I was even able to play Genshin Impact on high graphic settings. Nevertheless, it's also clear that while the game runs, it doesn't look quite as nice as it does on an iPad mini. Less demanding games like Souls or Roblox run beautifully and if you want a cheap small tablet for casual gaming, the A9 is a solid gaming tablet. Hardcore gamers however will have to spend a lot more money. I like the performance in everyday use. Common apps such as Chrome, YouTube, Feedly, the Kindle ebook reader and Microsoft Office run well, even with some multitasking. The A9 feels much more powerful here than the A7 Lite and I think it's definitely worth upgrading. The Galaxy Tab A9 runs Android 13 with One UI version 5.1 out of the box and we come to an awesome feature now where Lenovo, Amazon, Realme and many others are usually worse. Samsung promises at least two major software updates. So it should get Android 14 and Android 15. There should also be four years of security updates. Samsung is really good at this and we can see it on the Galaxy Tab A7 Lite, which is already running the same software as the A9, even though it's been out with Android 11 for almost three years. Samsung is clearly setting itself apart from the Android competition here. And at this point I ask myself, how important are long software updates for you? Let me know in the comments below.
As I said, the A9 runs in One UI 5.1, which means it has almost the same software installed as the much more expensive Galaxy Tab S9 tablets. This includes a number of Google and Samsung apps, including the Samsung Notes app. However, the S Pen is still not supported. It's a shame that Samsung hasn't included the Dex desktop mode, even though it does so on the equally powerful A9 Plus. The battery life is like a bar of chocolate in sunlight. It doesn't last as long as you would hope. In my test it lasted 6.75 hours, which is pretty disappointing. For this test I always run an HD YouTube video in an endless loop at maximum brightness. The Galaxy Tab A9 looks like a typical Samsung tablet. It's not as well made as the S9 series, but a little bit better than the A9 Plus. The back is mostly metal, but there's a plastic cover on the top and bottom. On the side there's a USB-C 2.0 port, a standard headphone jack and a micro SD card slot. The USB-C port does not support external monitors. There's a 2 megapixel front facing camera on the front, which is perfect for those who use beauty filters as details are hard to see even without a filter. It's fine for video chats, but the resolution isn't high enough for nice selfies. Photos and videos look very blurry, especially in low light. The main camera has a resolution of 8 megapixels and the quality is better compared to the webcam. However, it's also clear that you won't be creating detailed works of art with a tablet that costs less than $200. All in all, the cameras are usable, but not really good. You can also use the front camera to unlock the tablet using facial recognition. This works, but is not as secure as the fingerprint reader. So is the Samsung Galaxy Tab A9 a good 8 inch tablet? Yes, it's a great one. The display and performance are slightly better than the competition and I particularly like the fact that we get updates up to Android 15. The later makes it almost unique in this price range. The build quality is good and games like Genshin Impact can be played with high graphics. It's significantly improved over its predecessor, so it's worth upgrading. I wouldn't bother with the A7 Lite these days. I just think it's a shame that the battery life isn't long and that we don't get a 90Hz screen. Many will also miss the S Pen. In my opinion the A9 is a good choice if you're looking for an affordable and small tablet. It's great if you like to read news, magazines, books, PDFs or even comics. If you want a small entertainment tablet for movies and simple games it will do the job too. The built-in GPS will also come in handy for some as not all tablets have it. However it's not a good choice if you need an active pen for taking notes or great processing power for games. If you're interested in a larger tablet, check out my review of the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus. The performance is similar, but the screen is larger, has a higher resolution and supports 90Hz. It also has one nice software feature that the small A9 is lacking.